What's up, future respiratory therapists? Today we're talking all about artificial airways. Let's dive in. All right, so when we talk about artificial airways, we understand that there are multiple different types of artificial airways. For one, we know that we have an endotracheal tube. This is an obvious artificial airway. We use this to facilitate mechanical ventilation. Now, beyond that, we know we have tracheostomy tubes. Tracheostomy tubes are also used to help facilitate mechanical ventilation and to help people maintain airways who cannot maintain their own upper airway. That's a tracheostomy tube. Now beyond that, we have two other artificial airways and even maybe even a lot more than that. But for this video, we're also going to talk about the nasopharyngeal airway. We're also going to talk about the oropharyngeal airway. So what I have on the board here is um, about 20 words. And I love this exercise because one of the things I like to do with my students is get them to think about word association. So when you see a word, what do you think about? What does it make you think of? Okay. And this is what we call word association. So what I want you to do right now is to pause this video. I want you to take these 20 words and I want you to tie them into which of these four artificial airways at the top, which go with which word. Pause the video, come back, we'll talk about it. All right, so if you've done the exercise, then you have your words associated with which airways. We're gonna break it down and we're gonna go through it one by one. Now the first thing we're gonna do here is start with the yellow endotracheal tube. Okay, that is this tube right here. All right, everybody knows an endotracheal tube, at least if you're beyond your second or third semester, then you definitely know what an endotracheal tube is. Now let's just go through these words and think, okay, which of these words can be associated with an endotracheal tube? Now the first word here is radiopaque line. Radiopaque line. 100% goes with endotracheal tube. If you notice here, I know it's kind of hard on the video, but there's a blue line running all the way down this endotracheal tube. That is your endotracheal, I'm sorry, that is your radiopaque line. The radiopaque line is used to help you assess proper positioning of an endotracheal tube after proper placement has been established. Now, what does that mean? That means that once you have established that we are in the right place, being in the trachea, then the radiopaque line will be used to help you identify if we are in the proper position to the carina. We know that we don't want this tube too far in. That would maybe right main stemus. We also don't want it too far out that might would cause an accidental extubation. We don't want that. We want this tube to be, according to Egan's, between three to six centimeters above the carina. Okay? The radiopaque line on a chest x-ray is what you will use to assess that value. Semi-conscious. Now, that does not go with this airway. Yes, we will have semi-conscious patients with an, with an endotracheal tube. Yes, we'll have unconscious patients with an endotracheal tube. But semi-conscious does not go with endotracheal tube. Cuff. Cuff 100% goes with endotracheal tube. Now, if you notice here at the bottom of this endotracheal tube, there is this little piece of plastic wrapped around here. That piece of plastic is the cuff. I'm going to take this syringe and I am going to inflate this cuff. I'm just gonna put 20 cc's of air in it so that you can see the cuff. Now the purpose of this cuff is that once you're inside of the trachea, you inflate this cuff to create a seal so that when you apply positive pressure, then the positive pressure is applied to the lungs and goes in and out of the lungs and it doesn't just evacuate back up around the tube out of the trachea and you're not going to ventilate anybody. So the tube serves the purpose of establishing a seal within the trachea to allow for positive pressure ventilation. Obturator. Obturator does not go with endotracheal tube. Berman. Berman does not go with an endotracheal tube. Now the next word here 
is centimeter markings. Now, centimeter markings goes 100% with the endotracheal tube. If you notice on this tube, again, kind of hard, but we have 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, all the way down to 19, 17, 15, and 13. These are the markings on the tube. Once you have used the radiopaque line to establish correct positioning, then you will relate that and you will correlate that to where the centimeter marking is at the teeth of the patient. And you will document that. So if we know that we were in proper position at the 23 centimeter mark at the teeth, then we know that if we come in and we find this tube at the 17 mark at the teeth, we've come out of proper positioning. Likewise, if we come in and find it at the 29, we may be now too far in. My point is, is that the centimeter marking is used to help you establish consistency in maintaining proper positioning. So centimeter markings 100% goes within the tracheal tube. Nasal insertion. Now you can insert an endotracheal tube nasally, but nasal insertion should not be a word or a thought that comes with an endotracheal tube. Oral insertion, again, most commonly inserted orally, but again, not a word that distinguishes and should be specifically thought about within the tracheal tube. Stylet, oh my gosh. Stylet 100% goes with in the tracheal tube. We use a stylet when we are inserting an endotracheal tube. A stylet will help create rigidity so that when you see the vocal cords and you go into the trachea, you don't have a floppy tube. So stylet goes with in the tracheal tube and it is used to help and aid the insertion of an endotracheal tube during intubation. Flange. There's no flange on this. This does not go with in the tracheal tube. Pilot balloon. Yes, 100%. Pilot balloon goes with in the tracheal tube 100%. Now remember, I showed you how earlier we're going to inflate this cuff, okay? And I'm going to put another 20 cc's in here. So we now have a cuff that is inflated, but we also now need to manage that cuff pressure. So the pilot balloon, which is this blue part right here, is used to evaluate cuff pressures, but also to utilize to inflate the cuff and to deflate the cuff if we need to add or remove move air from the cuff. Prior to extubation, we know we always want to fully deflate the cuff. It is the pilot balloon that we will utilize with a syringe to help fully deflate the cuff so that we can now safely extubate a patient. So pilot balloon 100% goes within the tracheal tube. Inner cannula. This in the tracheal tube does not have an inner cannula, so no, it does not. 15 millimeter adapter, 100% yes. 15 millimeter adapter is the adapter on the end of this in the tracheal tube. Now this in the tracheal tube does not have one, okay? But the 15 millimeter adapter is the piece that fits inside of the tip of this. It comes on them naturally. I, I, I actually acquired this because then the, the adapter was taken off and they were going to throw it away. So they said, hey, I said, I'll take it. But there's a 15 millimeter adapter that goes into the end of this in the tracheal tube. And the 15 millimeter adapter is utilized to connect to a circuit to provide positive pressure ventilation or used during manual bag valve mask ventilation when you're bagging a patient with an endotracheal tube. You would connect to the 15 millimeter adapter. So it 100% goes with endotracheal tube. Goodell, no. Nasal trumpet, not a nasal trumpet. Bite block, now. This is not a bite block. There's, there is a thought process that if you're using an endotracheal tube, perhaps you might need a bite block. And that is true. That's 100% true, okay? A bite block for an endotracheal tube looks like this. It's this little pink 
Sometimes they're orange, but they are very rigid and they would prevent a patient from biting on the endotracheal tube, okay? So a bite block looks like this. If you put bite block within the tracheal tube, just know that, that it looks something like this, okay? And it is used to prevent the patient from biting on the endotracheal tube. I've actually seen patients bite through endotracheal tubes to where now we have a leak and we have to put in a new endotracheal tube. So bite block does go within the tracheal tube to help prevent the patient from biting and possibly rupturing and causing a leak in the endotracheal tube. So let's put bite block with in the tracheal tube. Fenestrated, absolutely not. These tubes are not fenestrated. You should not think fenestrated when you think in the tracheal tube. Unconscious, again, we said semi-conscious over here. Yeah, you might have a patient that's unconscious with an endotracheal tube. You might have a patient that's semi-conscious with an endotracheal tube. But semi-conscious or unconscious does not differentiate between if you need an endotracheal tube or not and should not be thought about with an endotracheal tube. Facilitate NT suctioning, which stands for nasal tracheal suctioning. No. If you have an endotracheal tube, you will be performing endotracheal suctioning. You will not be performing nasal tracheal suctioning. Even if the endotracheal tube is inserted nasally, it is still not nasal tracheal suctioning. It is now endotracheal suctioning. You're just through the nasal route, which is where the placement of the endotracheal tube or the route that the endotracheal tube took to get into the airways. So no NT suctioning. You should not think that when you think endotracheal tube. The last one here is Murphy's eye. And that 100% goes with the endotracheal tube. Now, if you notice on the end of this tube, there is a, another little side hole just prior to the tip of the endotracheal tube. This is called the Murphy's eye. The Murphy's eye serves a purpose so that if the main channel ever becomes occluded, we still have ventilation or collateral ventilation, which you could say, to happen through the Murphy's eye. Now, what you need to remember is that when we talk about the stylet, when you use a stylet to insert an endotracheal tube, you never want the tip of that stylet to extend beyond the Murphy's eye. Because if it does, then it causes a risk to your patient and we don't want that. So make sure that when you use a stylet, you put your stylet in in the tracheal tube, but that the stylet ends just before the Murphy's eye, okay? Now, that's in the tracheal tube. Now let's go over to tracheostomy tube. So I'm gonna change my color here and we are now going to be in tracheostomy tube. This is my pink color. Let's talk about tracheostomy tubes. This is what it looks like. This is what it is. You can tell much shorter, not as long. Your airway resistance is going to be much less with a tracheostomy tube because it's not nearly as long as an endotracheal tube. Let's talk about some of the things that go with tracheostomy tube. Radiopaque line. There is no radiopaque line on a tracheostomy tube because if you remember the purpose of the radiopaque line, then you remember that the purpose of that line is to make sure that we are not too deep in or not too high in positioning to the carina. Well, with a tracheostomy tube, you're not going to get close to being right main stemmed. And if you're in proper placement, you can't be any higher than where you are. So a radiopaque line is not needed and does not exist on a tracheostomy tube because once you have the tracheostomy tube in the right position, in the right placement inside the trachea, there is no positioning of it. It goes in and it is where it is, okay? You can't really adjust these. You don't withdraw them or advance them or anything like that. They are where they are. They are in the trachea. They will not extend past the carina and they will not be too high if they were put in properly. So radiopaque line does not go with tracheostomy tube. Semi-conscious patient does not go with tracheostomy tube. Yes, you'll have a semi-conscious patient with a tracheostomy tube, but those words shouldn't be thought about to go together, okay? Uh, a cuff 
So here we see our first one where there's more than one word that goes with more than one airway. Tracheostomy tubes also, also have cuffs. We have cuffs on tracheostomy tubes because we know that tracheostomy tubes are also used to facilitate mechanical ventilation. So when I insert air into this cuff, you see the cuff inflate. So yes, there are cuffs associated with tracheostomy tubes. Not to say that there are not cuffless tracheostomy tubes. In that manner, you would not have a cuff. But some trachs, cuffed tracheostomy tubes, do have cuffs and they serve the same purpose that in the tracheal tube cuffs serve and that is to help us facilitate mechanical ventilation so that we can properly ventilate our patients, okay? Um, obturator is the next word. We see obturator here is the next word. Obturator does go with the tracheostomy tube. Now, an obturator looks like this. This is an obturator. It goes with inside of the tracheostomy tube. And what we see is that when we insert this obturator, the tip of the tracheostomy tube goes from being very kind of sharp and kind of jagged. It could grab tissue and cause damage. When we insert the obturator fully, we see that the tip becomes rounded. Okay? And so that round tip allows us to insert a tracheostomy tube into a stoma, into a patient's trachea by, while reducing potential mucosal and airway drama. Trauma, not drama, trauma, okay? Because when the, when the obturator is out, the sides of this are sharp and they could grab tissue as we insert. So you always use an obturator when inserting a tracheostomy tube to reduce potential trauma and risk associated with tracheostomy tube insertion. So obturator 100% goes with tracheostomy tube. All right. Now, before I go on, you could think about the obturator as the exact opposite or the parallel to what we talked about with the endotracheal tube when we said stylet. Remember, you use a stylet to aid insertion of an endotracheal tube. You use an obturator to aid insertion of a tracheostomy tube, okay? Uh, nasal insertion, <laughs> these do not go in theirs, not nasally inserted, 100%. Do not think nasal insertion when you think tracheostomy tube. Oral insertion, also do not think tracheostomy tube when you think oral insertion, 100% not. Stylet, we already said that the obturator serves kind of the same purpose as a stylet, except with the tracheostomy tube, not an endotracheal tube. So when you see stylet, you should not think tracheostomy tube. Flange, when you see flange, you should think tracheostomy tube. The flange of a tracheostomy tube is this round piece right here. Some people call this the neck plate, the neck piece. This is the piece that sits against the neck of the patient, okay? A lot of times we use dressings behind this so we don't get tissue necrosis, but the flange is this outside area around a tracheostomy tube, it 100% goes along with the tracheostomy tube. Also on the flange, you will find the size of the tracheostomy tube. So this is a six tracheostomy tube. I see that because I can see the number right here. I know you can't because, because you can't, but the six is written right here. That tells me the size. I know this is a 6.0 tracheostomy tube. Pilot balloon, another double here. Pilot balloon, again, just like when we talked about in the tracheal tubes, look, you have a pilot balloon, it's right here. Its purpose is the same as within the tracheal tube. We will use it to utilize inflation and deflation of the cuff. We'll also use it to monitor the cuff pressure within our patient. So tracheostomy tubes, if they have a cuff, We'll also have a pilot balloon, and that pilot balloon is help us is to help us manage management of that cuff of that tracheostomy tube. Now, when we see inner cannula, 
We're going to go again. Oh, another trach. Very good. Another tracheostomy tube turn. This is the tracheostomy tube. This is the outer cannula. We have another piece that is the inner cannula. The inner cannula slides within the outer cannula and it clips into place and it allows us to connect to mechanical ventilation. It also allows us to, if this tube was to become obstructed, we could pull out the inner cannula, replace it with a new inner cannula, and properly ventilate our patient, okay? So inner cannula 100% goes with tracheostomy tube. Now, I just told you that the inner cannula provides for a 15 millimeter adapter to connect to mechanical ventilation. So yes, tracheostomy tubes have 15 millimeter adapters so that you can mechanically ventilate your patient and connect to a vent circuit or connect to an AMBU bag if you ever have to bag your patient via a tracheostomy tube. The next word we see here is Goodell. That does not go with tracheostomy tube. Nasal trumpet does not go with nasal with, uh, with tracheostomy tube. Bite block. This is placed within the neck of a patient. It is not in their mouth. So a patient can bite all they want. They won't be biting on the tracheostomy tube. Therefore, we will not need a bite block if we have a tracheostomy tube. Fenestrated. Fenestrated goes with tracheostomy tube. You have to understand that tracheostomy tubes come in various shapes and sizes and forms. They can be cuffed, they can be cuffless, they can be fenestrated, or they can be non-fenestrated. Now, a fenestrated tracheostomy tube, okay, will have a hole in the back side of it right here. And what that does is it allows for more air to flow up and past the upper airway when we are attempting to wean off of the tracheostomy tube. Remember, before we take these tracheostomy tubes out of our patients, we want to make sure that they have a patent upper airway and they can maintain that upper airway. So a fenestrated tracheostomy tube will allow for that air on exhalation to pass up through the upper airway, through the vocal cords. You put a speaking valve on the end of this with a fenestrated tracheostomy tube and a deflated cuff, and you will hear the patient phonate. You will hear them say words, okay? Hopefully. If there's any type of obstruction, upper airway obstruction, then maybe not. But if there's no upper airway obstruction, then the fenestration will aid for more air to pass through the normal anatomy and allow the patient to speak, okay? So fenestration or fenestrated 100% goes with tracheostomy tube. Unconscious, again, will you have an unconscious patient with the tracheostomy tube? Yes, but you should not think unconscious or semi-conscious when thinking tracheostomy tube. Facilitate NT suctioning, absolutely not. Murphy's eye, absolutely not. There is no Murphy's eye. If you notice, there is no um, collateral ventilation uh, port or hole at the tip of this airway because there is no Murphy's eye. Murphy's eye only goes within the tracheal tube. That's the tracheostomy tube, and we have now done that. Now, let's move on to oral pharyngeal airway. I'm gonna get my green highlighter here so I know that I'm on my green oral pharyngeal airway. An oral pharyngeal airway looks like this, okay? An oral pharyngeal airway does not have a radiopaque line because it is not going in the trachea. The purpose of this airway is to sit orally inside of the patient's mouth. The tip of it extends just beyond the base of the tongue and that prevents the patient's tongue from falling back and obstructing us to be able to ventilate that patient. So you would use an oral pharyngeal airway when you are attempting to bag valve mask ventilate a patient. That will keep the tongue from falling back and obstructing the airway, okay? That's the purpose of an oral pharyngeal airway. Now, this is still considered an artificial airway, all right? You have to understand that. But you have to understand the purpose of an oral pharyngeal airway, all right? The purpose is, is to prevent the tongue from falling back and obstructing us from being able to ventilate or even the patient to spontaneous, spontaneously ventilate themselves by keeping the tongue from falling back over and obstructing the upper airway. 
So there is no radio opaque line. Semi-conscious. That means the patient is somewhat awake, somewhat alert. They will respond to gag reflexes. You do not ever want to use this device on a semi-conscious patient. This device in a semi-conscious patient will cause the patient to vomit, potentially. And then if you're bagging, you're bagging and then they vomit and now you've aspirated them. So this does not go with semi-conscious, okay? Very, very important. Most likely probably going to be a final exam question and definitely a TMC question. Does it have a cuff? No. Do you see a cuff on here? Absolutely not. Obturator? No. We are not putting this into the patient's trachea. We are inserting this into the patient's oral cavity. Does not need, um, uh, we don't need assistance with a stylet to do so. Berman. Berman goes with oral pharyngeal airway. There are two types of oral pharyngeal airways. There is a Goodell and there is a Berman. So I'm going to come over here and highlight this word right now also. Berman and Goodell go together. Both of those create the two types of oral pharyngeal airways. Now my example right here is a Goodell. A Goodell has a channel down the center of it. It's oval and it has a channel down the center of it. And that channel is allowed for you to be able to suction the patient if needed. Okay. Now a Berman will look more like this. When you look at the end of it. So when you look at the end of this one, you see a circle, you see an oval, and you see a channel down the middle. Well, when you look this away onto a Berman, you will see something that looks more like an I-beam, okay? The rest of it is shaped just like this. But when looking at it from the edge or the end, you will see this type of appearance, and these channels right here are utilized for suctioning your patient. So you suction down the sides of a Berman oropharyngeal airway, but to suction a Goodell, you suction down the center of it. That's the difference between a Berman and a Goodell. Recognize those words, and when you see Berman, or when you see Goodell, you know we're talking about oropharyngeal airways. All right, nasal insertion, no. This does not go in the nose. Please don't try to put this in my nose or anyone else's. But it is orally inserted, 100%. This will go into the mouth. Very, very good. There is no stylet. There is no flange. There is no pilot balloon. Remember, we said we don't have a cuff. Therefore, we don't have a pilot balloon. There is no inner cannula. There is no 15 millimeter adapter. You cannot mechanically ventilate a patient with this device. You cannot bag a patient through this device. You can use this device to aid bag mask, bag mask ventilation, but this is only preventing the tongue from falling back and obstructing the upper airway. Therefore, um, it, it's part of bag valve mask ventilation, but you cannot attach directly to it with a bag and bag a patient via this airway. So there's no 15 miller adapter. We already said Goodell goes with oropharyngeal airway. This is a Goodell oropharyngeal airway. Nasal trumpet. This is not a nasal trumpet. Bite block. I want to put a little asterisk out by this, okay? Because you're probably going to see at some time in your practice somebody use an oropharyngeal airway such as this as a bite block. But ask yourself this question. If your patient is biting, would you at least say that they are semi-conscious? If they are biting, the answer is yes. If the patient is semi-conscious, do you want to add to their aggravation by putting in this to prevent them from biting on the endotracheal tube? No, because this is only going to add to the patient's agitation. This is only going to add to their frustration. They're probably going to try to bite more and they're probably even going to gag and maybe even aspirate. So although you're probably going to see it, I want you to remember that an oral pharyngeal airway is not an official bite block. If the patient needs a bite block, get a device made more similar to this. This one is pink. There's other ones that are oranges. I'm sure there's other ones out there. But don't resort. 
And be your patient advocate, actually. Be the advocate for your patient that when you see somebody or you come into a room and they have an oropharyngeal airway in them and they are gagging and they are biting and they are coughing and they are uncomfortable, take it out. Be your patient's advocate because this is only going to add frustration. This is not a bite block. I don't care what anybody ever tells you. It's not a bite block. Finistrated, there's no fenestrations in this airway. Unconscious, yes. This is the airway to use when you're trying to bag valve mask ventilate a patient. Put this in your unconscious patient to prevent the tongue from falling back and obstructing the upper airway and utilize this tool when attempting to bag valve mask an unconscious patient. An unconscious patient will not typically will not have a gag reflex. They won't, you put this in, they, you're not at risk for vomiting, which puts them at risk for aspirating. Unconscious goes with oral pharyngeal airway. Facilitates nasal, nasal tracheal suctioning? No, doesn't go into nasal tracheal cavity. So no, doesn't. And Murphy's eye? No, Murphy's eye only goes within the tracheal tube. Now this brings us to our last airway and our last airway is purple. So I have my purple marker here, and we're going to go through the same list. Radiopaque line. No, this is a nasal tracheal airway. This tube goes into the nares, through the nasal pharynx, into the pharynx, but not into the trachea. If it doesn't go into trachea, then we're not concerned with proper placement in relationship to the carina. And so you do not have a radiopaque line with a nasal pharyngeal airway. Semi-conscious, yes. Let's put this airway into a patient who is semi-conscious but is having trouble with upper airway obstruction due to the tongue falling back. This would be the airway that would be most beneficial for them. Okay, This airway would also prevent the tongue from falling back and the patient from not being able to ventilate. So semi-conscious, use this. Your patient will not gag with this. I have seen countless patients over countless years who tolerate this just fine. That doesn't mean they like the insertion of it. I'm not saying that. It's not fun to put one of these into a patient. And from the patient's perspective, it's really not fun. But once you get it in, it, this does not mess with the gag reflex of your patient. Okay, so this goes with semi-conscious. It does not have a cuff. You do not need an obturator. Berman and Goodell only go with oral pharyngeal airway. There are no centimeter markings because you insert this fully into the nares. It's in one way. It can only be in one correct way. There are no centimeter markings. Nasal insertion, yes. Nasal insertion goes with nasal pharyngeal airway. We will insert this airway into our patient's nares. It'll go through again the nasal pharynx and into the pharynx and sit just below the base of the, the tongue. Now, when you insert this, one thing that is important, if you notice the tip of this is kind of curved, this is the bevel. You want the bevel to be facing the septum. So if you're going to put this airway in me, you want to put it in my right nares towards my right nair. If you're gonna put it in my left, turn it around and put the bevel facing my septum in my left nair. The bevel is made for easy insertion to help prevent, again, mucosal trauma while inserting it. Because if you put it in this way, then that can have a tendency to grab and tear and destroy and hurt and cause mucosal, mucosal trauma. We don't want that to happen. So remember, always insert a nasal pharyngeal airway with the bevel facing the nares. All right. Um, not orally inserted. You would use an oral pharyngeal airway for that. There is no stylet. There is no phalange. There is no pilot balloon. Again, there, look, there's nothing here. to You can't mechanically ventilate with this. Um, this, is, this is not the purpose of this. So there is no pilot balloon because there is no cuff. There is no inner cannula. Once you put this in, this is the only device. If this becomes obstructed, you have to remove this one and place a new one. 15 millimeter adapter, again, no. 
Nothing here to adapt to a ventilator circuit or an AMBU bag. Not a 15 millimeter adapter. Goodell already goes with oral pharyngeal airway. Nasal trumpet. This is the common term for a nasal pharyngeal airway. So rarely will you hear somebody say, hey, can you grab me a nasal pharyngeal airway? What you're more likely to hear them say is, hey, can you grab me a nasal trumpet? And this is what a nasal trumpet is, okay? So nasal trumpet goes with nasal pharyngeal airway. Bite block doesn't go in the mouth, so nothing to do with a bite block. Fenestrated, no fenestrations. Unconscious, you can put this in an unconscious patient, but the point is, is you need to remember that if you have an unconscious patient, you can use an oral pharyngeal airway. If the patient is semi-conscious or conscious, then you're going to use a nasal pharyngeal airway. Okay? Facilitate nasal tracheal suctioning or NT suctioning. Yes. To reduce mucosal trauma associated with nasal tracheal suctioning, if you put in a nasal trumpet, you can now nasal tracheally suction your patient down this nasal trumpet, this nasal pharyngeal airway, and it will help facilitate that, that, that procedure so that it's not as traumatic and, 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 and uncomfortable for your patient. So yes, this airway will help to facilitate nasal tracheal suctioning. Murphy's eye, this does not go with a Murphy's eye. There is no Murphy's eye on this. Why? Because we're not mechanically ventilating through this. So there is no Murphy's eye. All right, so those are our four airways. And like I said, there's other ones. There's King Airways, there's the Combat Tube, there's the LMA, there's other artificial airways. But these are four of the more common that you're gonna be tested and quizzed over on your finals and on your TMC exam. Nasal pharyngeal airway, oral pharyngeal airway, tracheostomy tube, in the tracheal tube. Hey, I hope you found some benefit in this video. I hope it helps you have a better understanding of artificial airways and which ones are appropriate at the appropriate times. If you found it beneficial, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and leave me a comment. Tell me some topics that you would like me to talk about in the future, and I'll do my best to get them out in a timely manner. In the meantime, Average is easy. Don't be it. Go be great.